Okay, match number four. We are on the draw. We have a very awkward hand. For us to get blue mana on right now, it'll take until turn three. Turn one, mountain pass. Turn two, is it Boilerworks pass? And also discard a hand size. Turn three, compulsive research or preordain. Um, and at that point, we might have to discard a hand size again if we compulsive research. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything. I'm happy going down to six. All right, this hand is much better. Um, the fourth land. It would be nice. As of right now, we're going to go turn one, Swiftwater Cliffs, turn two. We could, is it Boiler Works? Instead of holding up Encounter Spell. Make sure we hit our land drops. Yeah, I'll put this back on, on top. It'll be annoying if we draw another land after that, but... As it is now, it'll be nice. They lead off with an Insolent Neonate, probably a burn deck. Burn seems to have switched to Insolent Neonate as their creature of choice. That and Kelvin Marauders. Before they had Goblin Fireslinger, which could ping for one a turn, but Neonate can also cash in for a card later, so. But it looks like this is not burn, because they just went and got a green mana. Or forest, rather, so. Flame Slash. So we can hold up and counterspell this turn, which I am inclined to do, since our opponent hasn't really done anything yet. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I could also Flame Slash and then play Boiler Works, which would be a fine play, but I'm kind of scared of what our opponent might be able to do with three mana here. They might be playing like a Mock Tears, maybe a Domain deck. We saw that last time we were in a league. Wild Mongrel. Okay, that's worth getting rid of. Looks like they're on Red Green Madness. Between the discard mechanic here and the discard mechanic here. They might actually be playing the deck that we were playing just a couple of leagues ago. I'm going to go ahead and force them to get rid of this. Right now, while well, they can't really make use of the discard easily, they could fiery temper us or something, but uh, that's not something they want to do, most likely. They discard in Evolving Wilds to get to draw. And then we can play Boilerworks or Guildgate. And if we play Boilerworks, we can pick up a tap land or an untapped land. So, what do we want to be doing next turn? We could potentially play Archeomancer for Flame Slash or Counterspell next turn, but most likely our opponent's going to resolve a threat and make us want to get rid of that threat. And if it's a big threat, like a uh, Hooting Mandrels, we might have to double um, Lightning Bolt it. So I think the correct choice is, is it Boilerworks pick up a uh, island? So that's what I'm going to do. And then we can pass. Alright, they get to resolve their mongrel this time. We get to lead off with preordain. I'm going to tap my boiler works here because I want to lightning bolt this on our main phase. Well, they have less than three mana available, and they can't really mana out anything too good. Mold Drifter is great, so I will take it. I try to get this mongrel off the table, see if they can mana out like a Blood Mad Vampire in response, perhaps, or even a Basking Root Wall could be an option. Then I can play Tap Land and set myself up for Mold Drifter on turn five with this Untapped Island. They might be thinking here about discarding multiple cards to try to save the mongrel. Uh, if they discard two, they go up to four toughness, but... Turns out they don't discard anything at all. And we get to hold open our other lightning bolt on their turn, which is great. Blood Mad Vampire. So either they just top deck, top deck that, or they had some reason for not wanting to cast it last turn. 
on our turn and then it being able to attack this time. I'm going to try to bolt that off the table. I don't want to have to be forced to block it. And now we get to tap out for Mall Drifter. Refill our hand. They're probably going to bolt this Mole Drifter. I would imagine they have some sort of removal. Maybe a Lightning Axe. Peregrine Drake is going to be a nice play next turn into a second Mole Drifter, perhaps. Or maybe Archimancer for Flame Slash. Alright, they're going to main phase discard their Arrogant Worm. They don't want it to get counterspelled. We've already shown that we're playing counter magic in our deck, so they're just going to do this right now. Alright, so let's go ahead and float some mana. Play a Boiler Works. Pick up Island. Play our Perican Drake. Untap our stuff. Okay, now we have six mana. We could cast another Mold Drifter. We could Archimancer into Counterspell. We could Archimancer into Flame Slash, which is what I'm leaning toward right now. Mild Mongrel isn't so scary when they only are going up to two cards in hand. I could also Seagate Oracle here if I wanted to, but I think that's better for next turn potentially. So yeah, I think I'm just going to Archimancer for Flame Slash prevent myself from taking in too much damage. Just get all the card advantage. Boop. Take care of that. And then the question is how I'm going to block next turn. They could discard two cards uh, to give it, make this a 4-4 four -four effectively. And they probably wouldn't mind discarding them because they're likely madness cards most of the time in this deck. Or maybe extra lands and they already have five lands they don't need any more. Um, so if I blocked here and here, with a f they basically prevents them from attacking. Unless they really want to trade with the Peregrine Drake. Or unless they have a... They could discard one card to make this a 3-3 and then Lightning Bolt one of these to uh, make their creature survive. So I think I'm just going to let their creature in unblock this turn. Uh, wait until I have removal open so I can... Uh, thwart their plans to try to blow me out when I'm double blocking the mongrel. As soon as we draw a ghostly flicker we have the combo online. We have Peregrine Drake, Archimancer, and Moldrifter. It's another reason to try to protect our creatures and not throw them in front as blockers. Alright, I'm going to discard Fiery Temper with Madness. Get an extra point of damage and take down Peregrine Drake most likely. Yeah. And they're also going to Lightning Bolt my Archaeomancer. Luckily I play another one so I can still go infinite. And they're also down to zero cards and I'm about to play another Moldrifter or maybe a Seagate Oracle. So I should be able to win without having to go infinite anyway. So Moldrifter first or Seagate Oracle first? That is the question. If I play Moldrifter, untap land, I'll have two mana remaining. And I'm going to draw exactly the two cards I would have seen with Seagate Oracle anyway. So Seagate Oracle is not digging deeper. Oracle is really only better if I see another Oracle. And I want to chain some draws together. So I think I'll just play Moldrifter. Play my island first so I have maximum choice with uh, colors of mana available. So I could like preordain into a Lightning Bolt if I wanted to. Perican Drake is a fine draw. Uh, I'm going to try to double block this mongrel, I think. Um, or threaten to at least, so I'll go ahead and pass without attacking here. And they pass as well. Alright, Island. Three, four, five. Peregrine Drake. Which is netting myself two mana here because of the boiler works. Mole Drifter. 
you always want to be careful about when you use your boiler works. Um, if you have too many of them remaining and not enough normal lands, it could be awkward casting instance. See Oracle. For example, here I made sure I have two these two lands remaining as opposed to say a boiler works remaining because now I can still cast counter spell if I want to. Preordain over mountain since my hand is already full of lands. Compulsive Research and Paragon Drake. These are both great. Um, what do I want more? Compulsive Research is very good, especially when I have plenty of lands to discard, so I'm definitely putting that back on top. Do I want a second Paragon Drake as well? With one of them dead and this one potentially dead to a removal spell, um, I might as well keep it. It's a fine card if I'm going infinite. It's a fine card if I'm not going infinite, so... Do it like that. Go ahead and attack with both of these. If I want to try to double block, I can do it with the Seagate Oracle and the third Mold Drifter here. Faithless Looting. Plenty of mana available, so they'll probably discard something to Madness. Alright, double Madness. They get to cast a Blood Mad for two and a Root Walla for nothing. They have one card remaining in hand, and that puts the flashback of Faithless Looting available next turn. And they pass the turn. Alright, so let's lead off with Compulsive Research. This card will land, and that will be a Swiftwater Cliffs. Yeah, that makes as much sense as anything. Um, going to play another Boiler Works. Knit myself three mana with this Paragon Drake now that I have three Boiler Works on the table. Uh, Compulsive Research again. Let's start with Flame Slash, shall we? Flame Slash targeting uh, Root Walla, or Mongrel rather, since it's a discard outlet, it could lead to some madness stuff when we're not ready for it. For example, if they have Fiery Temper, they have to do it right now. Compulsive Research ourselves. Discard a land. Boop. And there's the Ghostly Flicker. So if they don't have removal, Specifically, Lightning Bolt. I can't cast Lightning Axe or Fiery Temper right now. And that's game. Oh no, it's not. I don't have my Archeomancer anymore. I have to go find another Archeomancer. Oh, well, let's go ahead and attack. Let's keep back this. And we will pass the turn. And if they can't kill us, then we kill them in the air next turn. They can flash that back, that's fine. I'm going to save my counter spell for something that might prevent us from winning. They discard some lands, gain a life with a rugged highlands, and they concede. Okay, so I don't see any differences from the red-green madness list that we ran before. So what do we want to play? Uh, Relic against Hooting Mandrills is not a great idea, especially when they might not even play the full four Mandrills. This does nothing, this does nothing. Don't need a Giga Drowse. So herein lies the question. Hydroblasts are very good against Lightning Axe, Lightning Bolt, Fiery Temper, Blood Mad Vampire. Um, Electricery could be good against Blood Mad Vampire, Basking Root Wallow when they don't have Pump available, and Insolent Neonate. So I'm pretty certain that I'm not going to have to combo off to win against against them. Uh, they have some Pyroblast they can bring in, which will be annoying to deal with um, if they have them in their sideboard. But we have Hydroblast that can fight along the powerful axis. But in general, I think our removal just outpaces their creatures. So I'm not going to sideboard out any removal. I'm going to sideboard out combo pieces. So Electricery is a little bit too... Um, you have to get too lucky um, in order to be able to actually hit multiple things with it, so I don't think I'm going to bring that in, but I am going to bring in the Hydroblast. 
Um, these additionally, these get rid of Neonate and uh, Blood Mad Vampire already, so it's kind of overkill to bring in the Electric Re. I'm going to cut a Ghostly Flicker, two Compulsive Research. These are slow, and they're mostly for the combo. I don't need them. And then I need one more card. Counterspell is a little bit worse when all their things are so cheap and on the draw, so I can cut one of those, and I think that'll be fine. All right, on the draw. Two lands. Uh, two Preordains is a little bit slow, and two lands isn't optimal, but Firebolt and Hydroblast are both very good, so I'm going to keep. Notably, neither of these cleanly get rid of a Wild Mongrel, since they can just discard one card to survive the Firebolt, but this is still a good enough hand, I think. Tap land turn two means I don't have to worry about a wild mongrel yet, which is nice. They hit us for one. And now our very first question. We can play tap land, firebolt that. We can play island, preordained, firebolt that. We could just pass the turn. I don't think I need to preordain just yet. Um, if I draw another land next turn, I might not even be digging for land, so I'm not sure exactly what I want with preordain yet. I'd rather draw one more card first to figure that out. So I'm going to Firebolt while I still can, while they don't have mana available to pump this. Play a Guildgate and pass. And save this untapped land for a turn when I might need it more. Insolent Neonate, okay. That's a pretty slow threat, so I don't need to worry too much about it. Alright, I'm going to lead off with Preordain here. I'm going to do it before playing an island, because I'm not going to need two different red sources this turn, most likely. Now I really want lands, now that I drew a second Paragon Drake. But Counterspell is also very tempting, especially since I can play Island and have that available right now. Flame Slash is also tempting, since they have so many four toughness things. But I, I can't just keep no lands, so... I could put both of these on the bottom, even though Counterspell is good. It's a little bit awkward to hold up in Counterspell against this deck. They do have a lot of instant speed threats, because they can discard at instant speed with the Wild Mongrel, or in this case the Neonate that's already resolved. So I could play Island put this counterspell in my hand, and they can just pass a turn after playing three lands, and then on my end step go to do something, which means I've wasted this turn, and I, I don't get to officially use this counterspell. For that reason, I think I'm going to put it away. Um, the strength of these Paragon Drake into Paragon Drake into Moldrifter is going to be so high that I, I really should just dig for lands, I think. Alright, there's a Seagate Oracle. I think I'm going to preordain again. That way if I hit a tap one, I can play it. Perfect. Uh, which lands, if any, do I want? I know I want at least one of these. Um, combined with the island in my hand, that's three mana sources. Is it Boiler Works? Is four or five. Uh, so I think I'll put this on the bottom and put this on the top. I don't need to Hydro Blast this Neonate this turn. So I will do that. I will pick up a gain land. Next turn I'll have three mana available if I play the Swiftwater Cliffs again, so I can go like a Lightning Bolt or Flame Slash plus Hydro Blast, or I can play Seagate Oracle, and then the turn after I can go Paragon Drake, Paragon Drake, Mole Drifter, and have my big turn. Looks like they might be missing their fourth, their third land drop again. They missed it turn three. Yep, and they're missing it again. So their hand is all spells right now. They have five spells in hand, so they have a very nice and slow start, which is great. Uh, we still don't need to kill that Neonate yet, so I'm going to go with the Seagate Oracle and a Tap Land. Alright, they're going to Lightning Bolt that. That's 
fine. It doesn't actually cleanly block either of these, because this can become a 3-3, and this has Menace. Lightning Bolt is good. Perrican Drake is good. So if they Pyroblast my Perrican Drake next turn, that's going to be really unfortunate. If they do not have Pyroblast, I'm going to go Perrican Drake, Perrican Drake, Perrican Drake, Moldrifter, which is just insane. Of course, Lightning Bolt's pretty good, too. I think I'm going to uh, be greedy and take this Drake. Even if they do Pyroblast the first Drake, the turn after, I just get to Drake again. So they're going to have to have a Pyroblast pretty soon to be able to stop me from filling up the board very quickly. Three Paragon Drakes and then Firebolt, three Paragon Drakes and then Moldrifter, three Paragon Drakes and then Hydroblast plus Seagate Oracle. I had a lot of options. They are pumping the Root Walla, but they did hit a Land Drop this turn, so they do get to hold open Pyroblast. Um, I could wait until I have another mana available so I could Hydroblast their Pyroblast, but I don't think that's intelligent. Since in that time they might draw a second Pyroblast and make that null and void anyway, and a single Paragon Drake isn't that important if they counter it. The important part is being able to loop them all together. And if they counter the first one, I can still loop two of them into something else next turn. Alright, they're going to Fiery Temper this by sacrificing the Innate to get Madness. I'm going to do this while I don't have any mana available to Ghostly Flicker it, which is a good idea. Here we go. Time for fun to be had. As we all learn together that Peregrine Drake is a pretty good magic card. So now I have the option of Moldrifter. I could Fire Blast this Root Wall while they're tapped out. I can hold open Hydro Blast if I want to. Uh, but Hydro Blast is nice because you can usually deal with red creatures after the fact. And if they bolt either one of these, I don't really care. Even if they bolt both of them, I still have one left in my deck, so I can still theoretically combo off. And as I said before, I don't think I actually need to combo off to win this game. I think I can just win with the efficient creatures and draw. All right, do a counterspell on the mountain. So they have one turn to try to wreck me here before I get to hold up and counterspell in for basically the rest of the game. Looks like a Hootie Mandrels is coming down. Yep, exiling five cards. Double red uh, with no discard outlet means they likely have removal spells or pyroblast, so... We just drew a flame slash, which is perfect. Keeps us from being under pressure. Uh, now I'm going to Seagate Oracle, because I don't have a land to discard to this compulsive research yet. Boilerworks or Island. Boilerworks is fine. These are always really good when you have Paragon Drakes out and you have the potential of uh, drawing a Ghostly Flicker for them. Then even without the Archeomancer, you can generate tons of mana and just loop all your cards draw together without necessarily going infinite. Wild Mongrel. Uh, I could counterspell that, and I might as well. There's not that much more they can do this turn, and this prevents them from also playing Fiery Temper with Madness, or potentially going land into Blood Mad Vampire. I would slightly prefer to let that resolve and counter like a lightning bolt targeting one of my creatures, but there's no guarantee they actually even have a lightning bolt. Oh look, an Archeomancer. I don't have a ghostly flicker here yet. No, I don't. Let's start off with... Compulsive Research. And we will discard a land. Boop. Don't need to play this Archeomancer this turn. Take them down to seven, and then we have them dead effectively on board next turn. Pass the turn with Hydroblast and Lightning Bolt available. 
Okay, and we win the match. On to match five. <laughs>